Welcome fellow Stardust. Are you ready for a scare? For today's video, I'll be taking a closer look at Shinya Sukumoto's Tetsuyo Trilogy. I made a full review of the Iron Man, which I'll link up here as well as down in the description. And thank you for joining me today. For those of you who are new, my name is DeRay, aka Rainbow Fright, lover of all things in dark, creepy and weird and for all of my returning viewers thank you for coming back for more after watching the first film i immediately had to watch the second and third films but after two great films i was let down by the third installment so i wanted to talk a little bit about what worked and didn't work in each of the films i won't really be giving away any spoilers what i'll be talking about mostly are the setups for the films which some people people might consider to be spoilers, but for me, I don't think what I'll be talking about will ruin your viewing experience. Are you ready? Buckle up. Tetsuyo is one of the first films that paved the way for the creation of the subgenre Japanese cyberpunk. Released in 1989, it became an instant cult classic after screening in Rome at Fanta Festival, and it continues to draw in new audiences today. The sequel was released in 1992, but the third installment wasn't released until 2009. It's usually a difficult task to release a film, have it be successful, then replicate that film over and over again and see the same amount of success as you did with the original film. For example, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Halloween. None of the subsequent films were as successful as the original, but for me, Tetsuyo 2 Body Hammer does come pretty close to the Iron Man, and Tetsuo 3 The Bullet Man is just so far from the other two films. But the story is good on paper. Tetsuyo the Iron Man is the story of a salaryman who was turned into into a metal beast by a metal fetishist that he left for dead in a hit and run accident. During his transformation, when his girlfriend is around, he becomes increasingly violent. After having a dream about her doing freaky things to him, he wakes up and begins to transform even more. Even his pleasure stick is now a spinning drill. This causes him to unleash his full rage and anger and becomes a full-blown metal beast. When he comes face to face with his creator, all hell breaks loose. The metal fetishist is played by Shinya himself. The salary man is played by Tomoro Taguchi and his girlfriend is played by Kei Fujiwara. Kei would also end up being producer, cinematographer, and costume designer. Before production began for the Iron Man, Shinya had just been kicked out of his house by his father who was disapproving of him quitting his job in order to pursue his passions. Shinya's father frequently put him down telling him that he had no talent and that he should just give up on his dreams. Instead, Shinya persevered and put all of the money he saved from his day job into the 18-month production, which was a grueling one. So grueling that by the end of production, he had lost most of his crew. The high tension and claustrophobia that you see in the film was experienced by the crew, and for many, it was just too much. After shooting and editing a couple of drafts of the film, Shinya started to become a bit discouraged discouraged and almost didn't finish the film, but when his short film Electric Rod Boy won the grand prize at the Pia Film Festival, it gave him the boost that he needed to finish the film. Iron Man was the feature length version of Electric Rod Boy. However, Tetsuyo was shot on 16mm on grainy black and white film instead of color 8mm like his previous short films. This stylized high contrast look of the film puts the audience in a dreamlike world where anything goes. The stop motion animation is phenomenal. The attention to detail is just crazy. It really makes this visceral experience even more out of this world and is almost trance-like at times. We see this also in Tetsuo 2, but not so much in 3. In the third film, there's something that resembles some of 
the wire animation, but ultimately it looks like CGI animation, which I could be wrong about, but it doesn't look like the stop motion animation in the first two films. All of these images coming at us at a fast pace are accompanied by music that sounds like it's made from metal, which can be a bit overwhelming at times, but it's just so fitting for what we're looking at. The clanking and shrill sounds put us right in the middle of all the madness. Also, what helped to make this film more easily digestible were the pops of humor throughout the film. The comedic relief from the madness and intensity was a great refresher from time to time and much appreciated. A couple of examples are when the salary man feeds his girlfriend, and when the metal fetishes parkour is off the wall when chasing the salary man. The themes explored in the first film were sexual power, Japan's high technology industry growth, and man versus technology. We have a man who is slowly becoming his surroundings and the fetishist wants to fight back and destroy the world before it destroys them. The themes in Tetsuo 2, Body Hammer, aren't too different. There's still this a commentary on the industrialization of Tokyo, Japan, with still a focus on the negative aspects, such as people losing their individuality and becoming just a number and part of an equation that only benefits the rich and powerful. In Body Hammer, a couple's son is kidnapped because the father, Tomo, has been selected for an experiment that observes how strong one becomes after being shot with a transformer gun. He was chosen because he is known to be non-confrontational, but within him lies a dark secret that is awakened when his family is put in danger. Now this part might be a bit of a spoiler spoiler, so go ahead and skip to this timestamp if you want to avoid it. It turns out, unlike the other metal cult members, he didn't need the transformer gun injection in order to transform into a machine. His will is what transforms him into the body hammer, which means his will to kill is greater than the most evil cult member or leader. I've heard some people call Tetsuyo 2 a remake of the first film, which I can totally see. They're basically the same storyline, but with a few tweaks here and there. The first one being that we actually have a cohesive story compared to the the experimental storytelling of the first film. Also, our protagonist has a family instead of the single salaryman, but both men are provoked by an outside force that triggers their transformation into metal beasts. In Body Hammer, Shinya stars again as Yatsu, a character identical to the metal fetishist. He's even got his tracksuit looking outfit on again. And Tomuro returns again as the man who becomes transformed. Kana is played by Nobu Kanaoka, who was the woman in the train station in The Iron Man. We've also got Chu Ishikawa returning as the composer, giving us those familiar metallic sounds, but this time giving us a bit of a 90s vibe and sounding a little bit like a video game. And I'm pretty sure I heard some saxophones from time to time. And the sound design was kicked up a notch. It was just too perfect with all the squishes and crunching and heavy breathing. And again, all of this sound design really really puts the audience right in the middle of the madness. Like I mentioned earlier, we get some of the great stop motion animation that we got in the first film, and Shinya has basically recycled some of the imagery, which I loved. This film was still a low budget film at around $1 million, but that is significantly more money than the first film's budget. It looks like he actually used some of the same props from the first film, most notably the ball of wires. There were so many elements from the first film that were brought back and it just made me smile and one of those was the insertion of humor from time to time. One of my favorite reused elements in the film is the hello hello scene. In both scenes the lead is saying hello in the same way and in the same tone but in completely different contexts and I just thought that was so much fun because in the first film this is when we start to see the lead slip into his paranoia. もしもし。もしもし。もしもし。
To touch more on one of the themes, the effects of industrialization in Tokyo, we have a setting that is cold, blue, and futuristic. I couldn't help but think of The Matrix. In this dull and washed out world, the general population has become zombie-like with no individuality. They don't even bat an eye when Minori is kidnapped. When we get the warm red and orange tones, we are in the world of the metal cult, or evil is afoot. The metal cult is much like the general population. They've given up their individuality and freedom for the greater good, but have done so voluntarily. Tetsuo 3, the bullet man, is definitely the least successful of the franchise, but still has a cult following. For the first time, we have American actors, and the film is mostly in English. I think these were some of the factors that kept this installment from being better received. And I don't want to say that a Japanese film with American actors or being in English is a bad thing, but it was a bit off-putting after watching the first two films. While the budget was bigger, it didn't really seem like that much more went into the production of this film. In fact, I really didn't like the look of The Bullet Man. It looked too much like a TV show or a cheap made-for-TV movie. It wanted to have the look of the zombie and action films of the time, but it didn't succeed. But it did succeed at looking mainstream, but that worked against it. In The Bullet Man, the inciting incident is kind of a combo between the first and second films. We've got another family of three where the son, instead of being kidnapped, is run over in a hit and run accident which eventually causes the father, played by Anthony Bosick, to then morph into a metal beast once again. The acting was terrible, especially the lead. However, Shinya does return a third time as the antagonist and he's great, but overall the dialogue was just clunky and the music was more distracting than anything. There's even talk that Quentin Tarantino had shown interest in producing Tetsuo 3. Uh, both Shinya and Quentin talked about how much they loved each other's work, uh, and Shinya was excited to have him be on the producing team. But Shinya took too long to get everything together that eventually Quentin just lost interest and moved on to the next project. I think had Shinya continued to focus on creating a film filled with lots of metaphors and symbolism, instead of trying to make a watered-down American version of the first two films, he would have seen more success with this film. There was too much explanation that was muddled instead of a story unfolding before us. As far as humor goes, I don't think I recognized any comedic relief, which is something I really appreciated in the first two films. Maybe it was there, but it just went over my head because I was just that bored with this film. One last cool trivia fact is that the in credits song is done by Nine Inch Nails. Shinya said that he had always wanted to collaborate with Trent Reznor and he got his wish. I really don't have much else to say about this movie. If you're a Shinya fan or you want to complete the trilogy, go ahead and watch it. But if you really don't care, you can go ahead and pass this one up. You can rent or buy all of these on YouTube, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, or Google Play. It's been fun going down this Tetsuyo rabbit hole and I'm looking forward to watching more Japanese cyberpunk films like Rubber's Lover, Elevator, Meatball Machine, and more. And I'm not a huge uh, anime fan, but Akira is also on my list. But let me know down in the comments what other Japanese cyberpunk films I should watch. Or let me know if you see any of the Tetsuyo films and what you thought about them. Well, thank you again for joining me today, fellow Stardust. I appreciate you being here with me. I'll be back on Friday with another movie review. So, if you haven't already, go ahead and hop on the Rainbow Fright Freight Train and hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you liked this video, please hit the like button and share it with a friend. I hope I see you next time. Peace. Yay.